Hello, hello, hello. This is Elves coming to you from Bemis Crafty Corner. <clears throat> and today I have this sweet little project for us. This is, it's a journal, but it's more like a diary, okay? Very small. Um, this will fit in your purse or tucked away in a drawer. And it has some beautiful, beautiful paper here from Authentique on it. And just a very simple closure. And I just want to show you this. Now, this is not like your regular journals, okay? This one uh, has a binding. Sometimes this is called a corset binding, and sometimes it's called a Belgian binding. Um, so let me show you this. So I have just a cute little ribbon here to close it that's just attached at the back. And then when you open it up, you can see that kind of corset stitch inside. Now you can cover that up if you want to, but you don't have to. Now, some of the features of this book is, one, it holds a lot of pages. Okay, as tiny as this is, there are 80 pages in here for writing or drawing or musing your little thoughts or whatever you want to put onto them. Uh, they're in here um, beautifully finished. This book lays completely flat, okay, completely flat. There's no bulge in this at all. Um, if you want to write in it and you just, you don't want to deal with everything, you can just fold the cover back. And just write what you need to write. And both covers fold back like that. Completely back and out of the way. So the book can sit completely flat. And it's just the sweetest little book. And we're just going to get started putting this together. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. Uh, you just have to follow the steps. If you have any questions, as always, just go ahead and reach out and contact me. And I'll be happy to help you with it. Uh, so let's get the supplies from the list below and we'll get started on this okay all right okay so what are we going to need well we're going to need some chipboard um some scissors an awl a ruler a needle um doll needle an embroidery needle uh this is a hooked upholstery needle book binding kit if you have one because you're definitely going to need um some book binding thread. Uh, let's see. You're going to need a scrap piece of chipboard or cardstock or paper or whatever you want to use. Some low tack tape. And of course, pages in small signatures. Now, for this one, we're just doing a small book. Um, so, not a lot of pages. To be decorating this is more of a journaling writing in kind of journal not so much for this particular one not so much a junk journal junk journal okay the other thing you're going to want is some pretty paper to cover your chipboard in so you're going to need some glue and some double-sided tape i'm going to go ahead and get started on putting everything together for the purposes of this um, I will list all of the measurements in the description box and I get it that looks like a really tiny spine but there's a reason for it that's when I take these and I put them together and I measure them with a ruler it is just about half an inch so what I have here is slightly more than a half an inch it's like five eighths of an inch wide because we really want the spine to be kind of the same width as our pages when they are compressed okay so i'm going to go ahead and get out the paper that i plan on using to cover my chipboard i'm going to clear the space here and i'll be back and we'll go through the covering of the chipboard okay <clears throat> Okay, for this part, to cover the chipboard, now, the chipboard is actually uh, five and three quarter inches. So a six by six pad, although it would look really good around here, there's not really going to be enough here or here for you to use uh, the six by six pads to do this. So an eight by eight or 12 by 12, and I have two of them here. I have the Authentique. Um, this one is doesn't really have a name it's just uh 
eight by eight. Oh, it's the endless collection. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's got some nice size pieces here. And then of course I have, uh, a modern Miller millinery signature paper. Uh, this is from Colorbach, and this was really nice too. So I have to kind of look to see what look I'm going for here. And I do want it to look a little vintagey, um, but not too over the top. So this might be a little bit too much. So let's try the eight by eight. So we're going to go ahead and use this one. And I'm just going to pick uh, two sheets of the same paper out. really like this. Ooh, that's different. All right, so we're going to select this. That's going to give us the two sheets that we need to cover the chipboard. In addition to this, we're going to probably want some solid colored cardstock to go on the inside. Once we get this set up, we'll kind of decide what color we want to go with on the inside, okay? So basically, we're just going to kind of figure out what part of this we want to be on our cover. Do we want the B in the middle? Uh, something a little bit more over here. I kind of like the idea of that. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay, so I like this part right here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut my card stock, my covering paper. And this is card stock. I probably should use regular paper, but I do like the weight of the card stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this, which is five and three quarter inches. And I'm going to add at least a half an inch to each side. So I'm going to go six and three quarter. And then across, it's four inches. So I'm going to go five. So I'm going to go six and three quarters by five. I'm going to get my cutter out. And we'll start by cutting this at five inches across. And just make sure that that's, you know, the piece that you want on the front of your book. I like it. So I'm going to go five here. And let's see. Just make sure that I want the bottom and not the top. <clears throat> yeah, I like that. So we'll go six and three quarters. So I'm going to take an inch and a quarter off the top. When I lay this on here, I've got a half an inch all the way around, okay? Okay. So I'm going to do that on so the other So I'm using the red tape, which I've already peeled all the uh, plastic cover off. And I'm going to use just a little bit of glue on each one of these. And that's because the tape is great, but, you know, I live in a hard climate here, guys. It's hot. And so if I had this and I gave it to somebody and they had it here in the summer, this would fall apart with glue with just tape because the tape would just basically turn gooey and melt away. Now, I like to do the long ends first and I like to do both sides and then come around and do the short ones. So, I'll get these down. All the way around. And then I'm just going to kind of go over them with my bone folder just to make sure that I have good adhesion. All right, so now I have two covers. I have a front and a back. Okay, so now I need to cover the insides right in here, okay? So, I need to measure these. You know, 
I hate doing this without this. There we go. We'll use this one. So this one is four inches across by oh, about five and three quarters long. And I want a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I need to go to five and a quarter. And three and a half. So I'm going to take some eight by eight inch cardstock and I'm going to cut that down. <clears throat> and I've already cut it to the correct width. I just need to cut the correct length. Okay. Okay. So now I have both of these. Now I can put these down any number of ways, but I am actually going to glue them by simply going around the outside edge giving it a semi-generous piece, you know, amount of glue. And I'm going to put some glue through the middle. I'm going to line this up, leaving that quarter of an inch all the way around. And the reason I'm using glue here is because glue gives me that couple of seconds to move it. And then we're just going to use our bone folder and just really push this down. You can use a brayer here if you have one. And you just really want to get that attached. Okay. All right. I'm going to finish up the other side and I'll be right back. And we're going to talk about what to do with this tiny little spot. Now that we have these okay. covered. We need to do something with this because that's ugly, right? Well, there's a couple of things that we can do. One, we can paint it. We can cover it with paper if we want to. Um, or we can just, you know, we can cover it with the cardstock or we can cover it with plain paper, however you want to do it. I am going to cover mine in paper. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that just in case you want to do that as well. And that's where we're going to be using some of that paper that we reserved. Yes, the piece that we reserved from earlier. And all we're going to do is just take a piece that's, you know, about twice the width of our pay of our spine. So for mine, that's going to be, let's see, this is just about mm, five eighths. So we're going to go about an inch and a quarter. I'm going to cut that. And it is five and three quarter inches long. So we're going to take nothing. Let me see. We're going to take about an inch and a quarter off. All right, let's take a look. <laughs> Didn't it look beautiful? Okay. It's a beautiful thing, I tell you. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, look, we got a scrap. I don't think the Amy wants that. All right. <clears throat> so, first things first, let's glue this to the middle of the paper. Not a lot of prompt and circumstance here. Just some glue. Put it on here nice and even. And then we're going to cut the same thing. Just cut the corners off, make some tabs. It's going to be a little tab. And then fold it around. And then we're just going to glue the tabs down. Easy peasy. Little one first. The other end. Down the sides. And now this is going to be kind of a tight fit. So at this point you may want to use a small uh, clamp to hold this. Or you can just sit here and hold it and hope you don't glue your fingers to it. Hmm. All right. I'm 
Okay, and then just like the inside pieces, you're just going to cut a small strip of your inside paper that's just going to fit right down the middle, just like this. And this you can just eyeball. And I'm going to snip this off right about there. And I'm just going to put a piece of double-sided tape on that, tape it down. And that's going to be the inside of my spine. Okay. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to need a piece of um, scrap paper that is about an inch and a half wide and that's five and a half inches long, which is the length of our inside piece. And a scoreboard would be helpful here. And I'll tell you why. Because you're going to come in and you're going to mark this at a quarter of an inch and then one and a quarter, two and a quarter, three and a quarter, four and a quarter, and five and a quarter. So you're going to make six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? And then we're going to take our covers and we're going to make sure that we have them facing in the right direction. We're going to decide which side's the front, which side's the back. This is my front cover. This is my back cover. So I'm going to stack them together. And then I'm going to take this piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my scoreboard. And it's an inch and a half. So at three quarters of an inch, that's dead center in the middle. I'm just going to run a line. And wherever these two lines intersect is where I'm going to punch some holes. Okay. Now, we're going to make sure that we've got a nice even bit on both sides, top and bottom. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm going to clamp this down. Clamp the whole thing. So, I'm going to get some clamps and we're going to clamp the whole thing together. <laughs> If you don't have these in your craft room, I recommend you get some. It doesn't have to be these. It can be the ones from the Dollar Tree. Uh, we've all seen them, but they are very, very helpful uh, for these types of projects. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to line these up and we're going to clamp the outside together. And we're going to clamp the top and the bottom together. And then we're going to take our little piece and we're going to line it up here where it belongs making sure that we've got equal distance. And then we're going to clamp this on, on the back half. And this is why we made it so wide, okay? So we want to be able to get to these intersections. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it on my foam board, okay, and we're going to go all the way up to the top, and we're just going to poke some holes. Now, if you want to have your book binding be a little shallower, you can go halfway and do it at the quarter of an inch. I like the look of the binding, so I'm going to go with the half inch, and I'm going to go through all three pieces. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure that I keep my awl perfectly upright so that I don't have any wonky holes, okay? So now I have all my holes going on both sides. And I can go ahead and take off these clamps now. All right. And we're going to set these to the side. Now, we have this. What you're going to do is you're going to fold this in half. Just like that. Okay? So that the holes are up. And then you're going to take your signatures. And you're going to press these as close together as you can. So let's get them lined up. We're going to clamp these nice and tight.
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this right here. Okay. And I'm going to clamp this onto my pages. Making sure that all of my holes are on the paper. Okay. Then I'm going to take my ruler and at every single one of these holes, I'm just going to put the ruler up and down. I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm just going to mark these. I'm using the ruler as a guide. I'm just putting little tick marks on these edges. So they should look like that. Can you see the little lines on there? Yes, you can. All right. Now, we're going to take these off. And we're going to take these one at a time. And we are going to open the signatures, making sure that we keep all the pages nice and tight. And we're going to poke our holes. Okay. One. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to fold these in half and I'm going to put the clamp on them. Okay? That's my first set. I'm going to turn it upside down. Now I'm going to get my second set. Okay? Again, I'm going to open this up, put it on my board, making sure that I keep my papers nice and lined up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to close this one up. I'm going to put my clip on it, and I'm going to turn it over on my stack. And I'm going to go through the rest of them and do all exactly the same. I'll be right back. And we are going to bring back in our book covers. Okay. Now we want to leave about an eighth of an inch of space. Between them. So this is where that low tack tape is going to come in. Okay. So we're going to put that eighth of an inch of space between all the pieces. Just where we want them. And then we're going to use some low tack tape and we're just going to kind of go across here in between each one of these and we're just going to hold this together. Okay. We are going to be using some silk cord. And what you want to do is you want to go about one, two, three, four, five, oh, about six, seven times the length of your book. Okay. And then go one more. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and I'm going to get out my needle. All right. So we have uh, our silk thread on our needle. We're going to start on the left hand side and we're going to go from the inside to the outside. And we're just going to leave a little bit of thread here. And what I like to do is I like to just take another piece of my low tack tape and just kind of tape that on. Just keeps it out of the way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to go down here so that we go across that center piece 
And then we're going to bring our needle back up through the hole on the other side. Now I like to keep the book flat because it kind of helps keep the cord from knotting. But you can do whatever you want to do. Then we're simply going to come across and we're going to go below that stitch. Okay, so this is our stitch here. We're going to go below that stitch and we're going to go out. Draw the cord. We're going to go up on the other side. Just like that. Okay. Now, when we're over here, this is when we're going to tie this off. So we're going to take our needle thread over. through, draw it up, and then we're going to go over and around with our tail, and we're just going to get that nice and tight, okay? Okay, so once we have our knot tied, what we're going to do is we're going to come back into the hole. We're going to come back up, back over, and we're keeping our stitch below our top stitch line, okay? And then we're going to come back up through this outside hole. Okay. First stitch done. So you should have a single stitch on this side and a single stitch on this side and a double stitch in the middle. Can you see the double stitch? There should be two stitches, okay? Then we're just going to come down and go out through that hole, just below the one we came up in. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over. We're going to go up through the center of the binding. Down through the center. And then back up through the next hole. You booger. And then we're going to go back across going the same way. So we're just basically basket weaving. Up and down, up and down. Across the whole width. Back up. Back down. And as you bring it through, make sure that you keep it tight. And then back up through the center down through the center, keeping it nice and tight, and then back up through the hole that we went. There we go. Okay, then we're going to go down through the next hole. And then up through the middle. And back down. And then back up on the other side. And then back across. Basket weaving all the way back across.
back into the hole. Okay, let's make sure we get our cords nice and tight. Back down. And then coming back up below where we were, you want to always be below the, the top stitch. And how you know you've got this is you have two, you have single stitches on the outside and two stitches all the way on the inside. When you've got that, then you know you're in the right place. And this creates an S pattern, and I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to come back up over here. And then we're going to go down to the next hole. Okay, see the S pattern? And that'll carry on all the way to the end. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get that all finished up. And then I'll be right back. So let me show you. Okay, so when you finish, you should be back up through the bottom hole, which should be directly below the hole that you started. So this is the one you started with. Okay, let me turn it around so you can see. This is the one you started with. And here's the one where you're ending. Okay. And you have this kind of S pattern with the double lines in the middle. If you have double lines in the middle, you have done this correctly. You should have double lines on the outsides and double lines on the middle, okay? Now, this point. What you're going to do is you're just going to take your needle and go under your last stitch. Make sure that your stitches are tight the way that you want them, okay? If they're too loose, then tighten them up. But you don't want to pull it together, okay? You want it to have some give. Now, just finish this off. You're going to put your needle underneath, which creates this giant loop. Just go through it and draw it towards you, okay? Then you're going to do it again. You're going to go underneath that stitch, go through the loop that it creates, and draw it towards you, okay? That's it, guys. And then you're just going to Take your thread and kind of bury it by stitching it underneath here and just cutting it off. Get rid of your top piece. Now, if these are poking up and you don't like the way that looks, just go over it with your bone folder. Press it down a little bit, okay? Now we can take the tape off. Nice and slow and easy. Do not want to tear your paper, okay? Especially coming across these edges. You don't want to lift up any of that paper, okay? Now, if you're afraid that this is going to tear your paper, hit it with your heat gun. Because your heat gun is going to give just enough heat to make it release, okay? Makes the tacky a little gooier. And hey, look at that, a new use for your washi tape, right? So we're going to do it on the outside, and we're going to flip on the inside, and we're going to flip it over, we're going to get the paper off the outside. Nice and slow. Now, I chose this blue, one, because I thought it would show up pretty good on camera, but two, because I want it to be sure. The very last one's going to give me problems, right? I wanted to be sure that it showed up on camera, but I also wanted it to match. So I chose this blue thread, okay? So now I have a book cover. But else... How are you supposed to put the pages in? Well, I'll show you. For that, we're actually going to re-thread our needle with another uh, length of thread. And we want that to be about hmm, 
three to four lengths long. And what I like to do is go extra one. And we're going to re-thread our needle. All right. Our needle is threaded. I'm going to tie a knot on the end just to make sure I don't pull it through. Okay. And we're going to start with our first signature. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in through here, the center of the signature. And we're going to come out through here. Bring our thread through. Come on, come through, come through. Thank you. Okay, then we're just going to go around these two threads. Just like that. And we're going to go right back through that hole. Okay. I'm going to draw it down. So if you can see what I've done is I came out through the hole, I looped around these two center pieces and then went back in through the hole. And then when I snug this down, it's going to pull that tight. Then I'm just going to come down, go through the next hole, out, all the way, I'm going to go around these from the top to the bottom. A lot harder to show, but there we go. Okay. And then back in through the hole. the next one. And this is where some people say the hooked needle works the best. We're going to go back under those two threads again. And then back in through the hole that we just came out of. Okay. out under the two threads Let me get this a little closer here so you guys can see see I'm gonna put my needle under the two threads I'm coming out from the book I'm going under the two threads I'm 
basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a loop. Okay. Trying to get everything on the right side so you guys can see. So here's my thread coming out. I'm going under the two threads and then back through into the center of the signature. And then I'm just going to pull that tight. And you see it's going to create a loop right there. You see that little loop? And then I'm just going to pull that loop. Okay. And I'm going to do that all the way down. Bringing my thread out. If I do it this way, it might show a little better. Under. Creating a little loop and going back in. Okay. All right. Now, when I get down to this last one, I'm going to come out. I'm going to go around my double thread just like before. And then I'm going to go back in. Okay. So now I have one signature sewn in and I need to put the next one in. So the next one I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. So I'm just going to go in reverse of what I just did. But how am I going to get my thread back out? Well, that's simple enough. So I have my next set, and it's going to go right on top of the first set. And so what I'm going to do is I need to go out from here. So I'm actually going to see how close I am here on the corner. You see where I am on the corner right in the dead of the book? I'm going to actually just come up to the top here. I'm just going to go in. And I'm just going to go into my first hole. So I'm wrapping my thread, fitting it, see, over the bottom there. Then I'm going to come out and I'm going to go underneath my threads here. And back in. And then out the next one. Back through the hole. Sometimes it's a little difficult to see that little sucker. Okay. And then out through the next one. Lining it everything up. Boy, you don't know how much you miss a thumbnail until you don't have one. Get a loop. Back in. Oop. 
don't want to stitch through the thread. There we go. Suck right out of the way. Back in. And back out. Round. And I can tell you that's where this cover comes in handy because you can literally fold it completely out of your way. Back out. Up. And back in. out I always try to be a little bit more careful at the top and bottom because there's not as much material there up and back in Okay. All right. So I'm going to continue to sew in my signatures. I've still got two more to put in. Um, and I may have to restart my thread. And that's simple enough. All you have to do is just tie it in a knot. Okay. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Because I'm going to restart another string. So all you're going to do is go under the thread. Make sure you get everything snugged up. Okay, nice and snug. Go under your thread. It's going to create a loop. Go through the loop. Draw towards yourself. Go under the loop. And I would go the other way. Go through the loop. And draw towards yourself. And then you're just going to cut that off. Okay, you can use your bone folder and just kind of press that knot down real good. And you can leave a tab if you want to leave like a, a thread here for like a bookmark or something, a page mark. Absolutely leave one. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and re-thread my needle. And I'm going to start the next two. I still have two signatures to put in. And I'm going to get them both put in and then I'll be back to show you what the book looks like when it's done. All right, so now that we've got the little book done... We've got all of our stitching in, and we finished off our very last signature by doing the same thing. We brought the thread up to the top, and we put a, a knot right there at the end, and we left ourselves a tail. Now we have this completely done, but we want to put a closure on it. So the easiest way to put a closure on this, of course, you can use a rubber band or whatever, but the easiest way to do it is to take a piece of ribbon and go right here in the middle, and just kind of snake it through. And you're just going to snake it through there. And it's going to come up on the other side. So we're just going to fish it back through. Just like a net. And then just bring up the two ends. Give them about the same length. And then you just want to tie a knot right here at the back of your book. Right over left, left over right. A nice little knot. Then you just bring your two ends around to the front. And of course, if you want to tie this on the top, you just offset that a little bit. And then you just bring it up here and just tie a little bow. Sweet little bow. There you go. It's a sweet little book. And I hope that you enjoyed making this with me. Uh, if you didn't make it with me, I hope that you give it a try. It's pretty easy to do. I mean, I know it looks complicated, but it's not. It's a whole lot simpler than you think. Um, 
that's it for me, guys. So until the next time, uh, do me a favor if you haven't done so already. And I do want to thank all of you that have subscribed and got me to that 500 subscriber mark. Um, but if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Night me, ring my bell, and share me with all your friends. Till the next time, guys. Bye-bye.